Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera and a very good afternoon. Thank you very much for the introduction. I will chairperson Nini. Sama nama dengan anak saya. Nini. Maknanya dah tua tu. Saya bukan dia. Dia muda. Anyway, uh, thank you very much um, UITM, the organizer of this international conference for inviting me here. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Saya takut juga bila introduce banyak-banyak yang superlatif. Takut nanti lupa daratan. But anyway, I'm I'm humble and I'm privileged to be standing in front of you. Distinguished guests, I, I was made to understand that there are quite a number of uh, international participants, I'm told. So I have to admit that I'm not an expert. So today's session is more of a sharing session. There are three portions, mainly three portions of my presentation. The first one is more of the theoretical part, <laughs> which may be a little bit boring, lah, good. but I'll try to make it interesting. The second part is the one that probably will give more value to, to all of you. Uh, it's our story, it's the Prodoa story. And uh, being the ambassador or the brand ambassador of Prodoa, I will try to share with you some of the things that we do with regards to this topic that has been given to me, entitled Employee, Employer Engagement, How Do You Bridge the Gap? And uh, last but not least, you know, I'm from an engineer. Saya transform myself to be a salesperson and a marketeer. Uh, it would not be apa kata, fair for me not to talk a little about my company lah and the products. And of course, later we'll have the Q&A. <coughs> I've been given a tough subject and I've been given the toughest time in which after lunch, you know, you have difficulty to concentrate, betul tak? Ramai yang anggup. I will try not to make many of you to sleep. Kalau nak sleep pun, you tell your neighbor, you kata, I just want to make, I just want to rest my eyes. Okay, eh? so because this is the most difficult part, of the day, I will start with something on a lighter note before I go into this program. Boleh tak? You know, the World Cup has just finished, betul tak? Although I see there's a lot of ladies here, but I'm sure now ladies, ladies power, ladies pun, you pun tengok World Cup juga, betul tak? And we all know that the French won, kan? The World Cup, right? Wow, there's somebody clap for France. Ni mesti peminat France ni. And uh, unfortunately, you know, Croatia, whom I think you may not agree, is the better team, lost. So immediately after the game, everybody was enjoying themselves in Moscow. So the French, you know, went out to the pub to drink. Similarly, the Croats, the Croatian, who unfortunately lost the game, they tried to make themselves happy lah, eh? walaupun they kalah. So there was this group of French, you know, who was passing by the pub and saw a group of Croatians who were drinking. So they went in, you know, to say hello to this group of people. And they were surprised because these people were drinking from the saucer. Daripada pinggan. They minum daripada pinggan. So, excuse me, Mr. Kret. Why are you drinking from the saucer? Mr. Franz or Mr. French, how come you don't know? We have no choice to drink it from the saucer because you guys have taken away the cup. They may not work out. Betul tak? We are not amused. But then you are still half asleep. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let me go through the contents of my presentation. There are about five topics. Let me go 
through quickly the basic definition which all of you know anyway. So apa itu employee dan apa itu employer? Employee is defined as an individual Okay. So an employee is defined as individual who works either part-time or full-time under a contract of em employment. I think these are the key words. Eh? Part-time, full-time, mesti ada contract of employment and also at the same time, kita kena recognize dia punya, dia punya rights and dia punya duties. So that's the definition of an employee. Now on the other hand, the definition of the employer it must be a legal entity that controls and directs the workers or the employees uh, through the contract for employment and is obligated due to the work done, must be compensated or must, must be paid. Lah. So in, in this respect, your immediate superior may not be your employer because he or she represents the organization or the employee or the employer sebab tu kita tengok dalam contoh what i'm sharing with you on the slide it's like an organization in which you have the layers of authority kan ceo the, the second level coo and the rest so those at, at the bottom tu they report to the next level right not and so on and so forth so the employer is not it's not the your boss but the boss is a representative of the employer, i.e. the representative in this respect of the organization. So that is the simplest definition in terms of who the employee is and who, are, who the employer is. Now, let me go back to the topic, to this topic, employer, employees, engagement. How do you bridge the gap? Now, if there's no engagement between employer and employee, inilah yang akan berlaku di antara lain. Eh? So, we, we see the comparison between an employer-employee that they are engaged and a situation in which the employer and the employee are not engaged. Now, let us try to define what is meant by engagement. Through show of hands, how many of you in this hall are married? Boleh angkat tangan tak? Wow, almost 90%. Were you all engaged before you got married? Through a show of hand. How many of you all went through that process of engagement before you got married? Wow, 50% of that 90%. <laughs> yeah. So those of you who went through that exercise of that process of engagement, you understand what we mean by engagement. Lah. So in that, in that respect, you know, it's a loose bond between a couple before the marriage. That's that process. Now, in the context of organization, one illustration is through gears. No, this, this is a representation of gears. Eh? So when the gears are engaged, bila dia berpusing, yeah, to make sure that, say, a system needs to work, train needs to move forward, or even a vehicle needs to move forward, the gears must be engaged. And they must be engaged in tandem with one another. Yeah? This in contact with one another so that they will then move in tandem when the vehicle, the train, or the car needs to be moved. So it two engagement that is important. They must move in tandem. Now, some of the common misconception or misperception. Some people say that engagement is synonymous with loyalty, commitment, dedication, and happiness. In the context of an organization. Lah, yeah? But however, if you notice, a loyal and happy worker does not mean 
he or she performs. Am I right? You agree or disagree? Yeah? So, this person punya contribution may be little. On the other hand, a committed worker who works hard to get the job done, not necessarily they, they tinggal lama, kan? Because there's always this issue of recognition, rewards, and the rest. And this is something that, that is common. This, this happens in many places, in many organizations. Yeah, universities, termasuk universities. So what do you mean in the context of the subject that we're talking about? What do you mean by employer-employee engagement? I've tried to define it as engagement refers to the degree in which employees connect with their organization and its goal. Uh, ini yang mustahak ni, apa keywords that I've put there refers to the degree in which employees connect or communicate with their organization and its goal and they must have something in common. Kalau tak ada something in common, it become a disengagement. It's not an effective engagement. Now, I've, I've tried to show some comparison between an employee that is engaged and an employee that is disengaged. Sebagai summary lah, ya. Apa dia di antaranya? If you look on your right hand side, I sorry, your left hand side, my right hand side, engaged employee, biasanya works beyond the call of duty. Dia tak berkira. You know, I'm sure you have come across colleagues, your colleagues or even your subordinates, who says that this is my job description. I want to keep to my job description. Betul tak? Ada tak? Not wrong. Because this is the job description. However, is this an engaged or committed employee? Dalam bahasa Hindi, kita kata nahi-nahi. Ya? An engaged employee is also somebody who takes ownership. So, tadi yang pertama tu dia go that extra mile. Terutama, those who are engaged in the front line. I'm sure many of you have experience going to hotels, yeah, or going to supermarkets, or going to showrooms, to our showrooms, for example. And I'm sure many of you leave the place disappointed. I tell you a story, actual story, when we did some survey. Ni pasal nak compete, nak, nak, nak do benchmarking against other brand. I will not tell you the name of the brand, lah, but it's one of the luxury brands. You go inside, I mean, I went inside with, with a few of my colleagues. We saw the salespeople. 15 minutes, nothing happened. Nobody came out to ask us what we want. 20 minutes, nothing happened. After 30 minutes, my colleagues and I have to approach the salesperson. And I'm sure you have experienced things like this. So here you are, you have an employee, but who doesn't care, who doesn't do that extra mile. And obviously, I lost my interest. So that particular day, the company, the organization, the salesperson lose a potential sales. And this happens in many, many places. Minta maaf cakap, hotel industry pun macam tu. Hospitals pun macam tu. Especially here in Malaysia. Frontliners. Uh, this is something that that we, we, we have to be serious about. Kemudian dia kena be accountable and responsible and uphold and observe 
the values, the good values. Every organisation, they are the value, they can. Uh, guiding principles, they call it. Uh, corporate values. So they must be able to up, uphold and observe the values, especially when I talk about the, the frontliners just now as an example. You know, you go to organisations, sometimes you take out the card, walls, they are the customer charter, the dan sebagainya kan they talk about customer is always right tetapi there you are you know in the in the example that I gave just now 30 minutes nobody comes to you and dekat wall tu kita nampak they talk about customer charter yeah now the other important thing again I give the example of the frontliners and all of us in this room because you represent your organisation Whether you you like it or not, you are the brand ambassador. You are the organisation punya spokesperson or the ambassador. So especially when when you first contact, somebody calls you or you meet somebody from outside, you are representing your organisation. So that's why it's very important that you uphold all these values. Imagine if you tak jaga semua ni. Automatically, your brand goes haywire. And people will say, hey, what happened to this brand? Yeah? And then you want to grow with the organization. And the organization must make sure there are other opportunities to grow juga. And, and engage employee always, they letak the teamwork the team spirit first rather than individual what what is there for us rather than what is there for me yeah so the thinking is always about the team about the organization not so much about he or she as an individual and then there's less challenges to align the organization to the company's vision or direction bila dia dah faham They observe, they are committed to the one that I've mentioned earlier. Then in terms of alignment and understanding the objective, the direction and the goals of the organization, they sel- selari. Uh, they seimbang. Now on the other hand, an unengaged employee are the negative of, the, of, the, of what I've showed to you on the right hand side, or on my, my right hand side. So they work, tadi saya bagi contoh, they work on job description. Berkira ni I, I'm sure you have come across Minta maaf saya cakap eh? Subordinates or employees eh? Katakanlah Example the work Your your working hours is from Say 8 to 4.30 Contoh eh? Or 8 to 5 eh? Dia pukul 4 tu Katalah uh, Tamat kerja pukul 4 Setengah contoh eh? 4 setengah Pukul empat tu dia dah tak buat kerja lagi dah. Ya. Yeah? With all due respect, I pergi bagi example ni, actual example. Kalau ladies tu minta maaf cakap, I know the majority of you are ladies here. Pukul empat contoh tadi, empat dia dah stop sebab dia nak pergi make up dulu, nak balik. Ya. Yeah? So at that point, you tak suruh dia bagi, you bagi assignment ke apa-apa ke, sorry. Dia terima, dia kata dia buat esok. So exactly at 4.25 She or she is no more dekat chair dia lagi dah Tunggu Q nak clock out Because exactly at 4.30 Dia akan punch, kalau yang pakai punch Very disciplined Come exactly at 8 Goes out exactly at 4.30 Nothing wrong kan sebab dia kata dia punya working hours macam tu. Dia tak ada tak ada do that extra mile because he or she only thinks about diri dia individually kan. Not about the the good of the organization. Versus a person who goes that extra mile who works beyond the call of duty yang kita, kita bagi example tadi. Itu perbezaan yang amat besar dan amat ketara. And if you look at successful organisations, there are, which are many, even in this country, kita tengok dia punya corporate culture dia. I'm not saying that all of us have to work late, tidak. You need to work smart as well. Yeah? 
but majority of them they they take this as an organizational pride uh, itu yang disebut ownership tu so this side of the slide dia tak ada benda tu doesn't go that extra mile more likely leave the company uh, masa susah dia kata bye bye uh, dia jumpa puan azida puan pendaftar i have to go <laughs> Uh, sekarang susah saya I want to join another another company or organisation that's doing well. He or she will only stay during good times, yeah. And then yang saya sebut tadi is more about what is it for me? Apa yang saya dapat kalau saya buat ni? Not so much about the teamwork. What is it for for us and what is it for the organisation, yeah? And then there are the misalignment between their punya own objective against the company punya goal now what are the factors to create that engagement how to get people to be engaged i'm sharing with you about 10 factors lah 10 points yeah you may agree you may disagree you may have your own list doesn't matter but i'm sure you will basically agree with what I'm sharing with you. Apa dia di antara lain? Yang pertama is clear vision of the company. If you want everybody to move towards one direction, the vision of the company or the vision of the organization in the context of universities must be made clear so that everybody is well informed of that, dire of that direction. Yang kedua is clarity of organizational messages. Each organization wants to share certain key messages. So message ni kena, you must make that message clear. Jangan nak berlapik-berlapik sangat. Bila berlapik-berlapik sangat, ini yang, you know, the people at, at the bottom, they may not understand. Make it as clear as possible, make it as simple as possible. Why? Because you need to cascade this down. Kalau kita ada vision and mission, if you don't cascade it down, people will not understand there's misalignment, then there's no support towards that common goal. Eh? And then communication, mesti two, two way. Sometimes people take this for granted. Lah. Yeah, I have my witness as well. Kita kata kita two-way communication, we want to listen. But more, more often than not, it's only one way. This is what I say, this is what I believe in, you must follow me. So this is not good. As effective leaders, we must also have the ability to listen. Dan lepas kita listen, yes, you analyze. You know, in, in some negotiations, in the case of the organization that I'm attached to, we have four internal uh, unions, eh? four domestic union, and once in three years, we negotiate on collective agreement. I'm sure you're quite familiar with that. And, uh, you know, the union will ask all sorts of things. A, B, C, D, sampai Z. Kalau boleh dapat 30, 30. You know, I've come across a negotiation in which the union was asking for, you know, the sky, <laughs> an increment of 50%. But kita dengar, not necessary that kita kena fulfill all those. That's why you have negotiation. They must come with facts and figures why they're asking for 50%, for example. What's the cost of living, interest, so on and so forth. And kita pula on this side, the employer on your side must also have our facts and figures and then only you can start that process of negotiation. Fourthly is to instill the sense of belonging, respect, recognize, especially on their achievement. Uh, and, and this is very, very important, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Reward, recognition, very very important uh, i'm sure many organization you are the apa ni, small group improvement kaizen activities so all this 
all these ideas that comes from bottom, eh, bottom up ni, needs to be recognised. Tak semestinya kita adopt, not necessarily. But if there are good ideas, you have to recognise. And once you adopt, kena ada reward. Yeah, quick wins, small wins, very important. Especially when you embark on certain project, or or when you embark on a transformation in your journey. Yeah, these are very important. Quick wins, celebrate, reward, recognize, you move on. Uh, particularly when you are on transformation, you are you are undergoing big changes. And then inspire success lah. Yeah, saya sebut tadi ya. Eh, one of the example is quick wins. Quick wins need to be celebrated. I'm sure you agree with me on that. Eh? Yang keenam, tuan-tuan dan perempuan, ladies and gentlemen, is you must bagi opportunity to grow. Employees or engaged employees, they are happy to stay with you, to be loyal with you, to go that extra mile, extra mile when they see there is opportunity for them to grow. By show of hands, how many of you in this hall are HR practitioners? May I know? HR practitioners. Okay, tak ramai. So some of the terminologies I spoke ni, I'm sure you'll be very familiar with. Eh? When we say you want the employee to grow, dari segi uh, career dia, it can grow horizontally or vertically. You are HR, faham eh? So what do I mean by horizontally or vertically? Horizontally ni, katakanlah today, he or she has one two or three tasks. When you grow horizontally, you are able to give him and her more than that task. Because you know this particular person, they are under that capability and ability to be given extra task. That is what we mean by horizontal growth. Yeah? Vertical growth ni is when people are upgraded or promoted in which they are given bigger task. That's why they get the vertical. Horizontally is this way. And, and this is the concept of, in some organization, the difference between upgrading and promotion. You are upgraded in the, in the same job that you are doing, but you have expanded your project scope. Promotion ni, when you are given a bigger task or bigger responsibility and probably bigger, the number of subordinates has increased. Itu bezaan dia di antara upgrading dengan promotion. And then training, retraining, human resource development, ini key, ladies and gentlemen, to success of any organisation. Especially those organisations yang, yang going transformation or those organization or company that is changing in terms of product lined up, business modelnya. So, kepakaran of your of your workers need, need to be changed. You need to reskill them. You need to retrain them. And also sometimes because of your competitors. Competition has gone the other way. You are still this way. Tak boleh. You need to train and retrain your people. You need to remodel your organization. And now, you know, the competition is digitalization. People are moving towards digitalization. IR 4.0, big data, IoT, things like that. If our own people are not prepared and not being trained or retrained, macam mana nak compete? How are you going to grow that organization? So, ladies and gentlemen, training, retraining, Amat, amat mustahak. Yeah? Some people say, uh, boring. When I have training, boring. <laughs> and and, and I, I can assure you, there are also people who just look forward to go to training. I've come across subordinates. They just, they just love to go through training. Bila saya tanya dia, kenapa? 
menyampah di tengok bos tadi. Ini cerita betul ni. Dia kata dia nampak bos setiap hari bukan pleasure, pressure. Stress itu. So I have the opportunity to get out of my office. I don't have to see my boss for two or three days. I'm very happy. Kan? So you have this category of people. You also have this category of people. Yeah, look forward to training because of the food. Because they kata pergi training dapat makan tiga empat kali yang sedap sedap. <laughs> Especially if the training is done in you know hotels, dapat makan uh, hotel punya food. Particularly subordinates kita yang you know slightly the lower category ni dapat makan hotel food. Dia tak tahu pada hotel food. Not all hotels are good food lah. <laughs> yeah. So you know there are these people. This type of people which you, you need to understand. So training and retraining in general is very, very important. We need to equip our people. We need to give them the right skill, the right equipment as well. And then, of course, reasonable remuneration package. Yeah? Uh, you know, now with this internet thing, you can make comparisons between the same job you may you be able to know how much is being paid public sector ke private sector ke uh, and recently uh, you all know when when uh, the new government was formed apa among the first things that they did that was made public remember the remuneration of glic kan jlc punya punya ceo betul tak am i right Tiba-tiba uh, kita kita nampak ada yang terkejut betul tak? Uh. Saya tengoklah juga nama dalam tu kan. Nama saya tak ada alhamdulillah. <laughs> By definition yeah we are not JLC sir. Huh? We are not. But my parent company is JLC. UMW is JLC. Saya sub dah sub dah. So anyway, this reasonable remuneration package is very important. You need to retain talent. Then, there are there are two components of remuneration. One is the fixed, one is the variable. Yeah, sometimes kita ada kekangan dari segi budget. You need to keep to certain budget. So you 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 design your your pay package or remuneration in such a way that you may increase your variable in your package based on performance. Lah, now people. Selalu talk about pay for for performance. I know of organisation who pays their top leadership uh, based on strategic initiative, mid term, long term, uh, long term punya punya initiative are also being paid. Yeah. Now, the Prime Minister has announced there will be a lot of changes to the GLICs and the GLCs. The government punya policy moving forward is that they will not pay extremely high. So base pay tu will be lower, but it will be compensated through performance. So if you perform based on certain KPIs, you be you will get more in, in terms of the variables, eh, bonus dan sebagainya. Okay, let's move on. And last but not least. Ladies and gentlemen, tadi saya dah share sembilan yang ke sepuluh is work life balance. Yang ni banyak daripada organisasi don't take this seriously. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Sebab satu as employer, employer kena provide safe work environment. Ya, yeah? environment yang conducive, environment yang secure. And then health is also important. We have seen reports coming out, you know, in newspapers, in in news about depression. Sekarang ni, yeah, banyak cases. Tama Af cakap, you know, uh, suicide nya cases is on the increase. Yeah, tiba-tiba keluarga menjadi pincang dan sebagainya. Because of stress, because of depression dan sebagainya, even kerja dia depressed. Yeah, 
there have been cases you know reported of doctors being depressed doctor ya sepatutnya cure orang yang depressed the doctors themselves are depressed yeah so work life balance ni sangat mustahak yeah provide suitable training and environment to manage and reduce work stress so kerja yes but you must also give them ample and enough time for them to de-stress for them to be able to spend the time with their family or apa yang disebut sekarang ni sebagai quality time yeah and of course for those of you yeah depending on what religion or your what your belief is you kena ada kena ada platform to enhance the spiritual journey as well and the good value system so these are very important ladies and gentlemen there is now a lot of stress being being put on um, safety health and environment health is becoming more and more important now yeah okay what are the prerequisite for successful organization kalau I'm a line organization inilah yang akan akan berlaku kalau department di bawah tu dia tak uh, apa ni not aligned properly they don't understand what's happening they are not supporting one another then they don't have a common vision a common uh, direction so you will get an unaligned organization although you may have an engaged employee employer or employee but in the end it becomes a non successful organization ini banyak berlaku yeah so we don't want to go into this uh, this is the the one that is being aligned ini nampak lebih teratur eh, clear bila kita dapat communicate you know common goal common uh, common direction you have strong linkage between the departments and the, and, and the divisions then you have an aligned organization engaged employee which equals to a successful organization i have to speed up because i have about 15 15 more minutes to go eh 15 more minutes to go okay Okay, this is the example that I'm sharing with you of my organization. Saya punya peringatan kepada tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, jangan copy and paste. It works for us, it may not work for you. Yeah? So you may use this to do benchmark and then you go back if you have some problem, similar problem, you make the adjustment accordingly. You make your customization based on your organizational needs based on your organizational challenges so in in the context of prodo we went through a transformation journey transformation 1.0 which was done few years back we are now in the midst of transformation 2.0 which we started in 2017 is going to end in 2021 so our objective here is a strategic roadmap in which we wanted to share with everybody in order for us to continue to be competitive eh? as you may know something that i'm very very happy very proud of but very humble with this success and because many of you are supporting us supporting prodo we have been the number one automotive company in malaysia for 12 years in a row eh? so nak move forward tu macam mana nak menentukan kejayaan itu boleh yeah, berpanjangan so we had to come up with a strategic roadmap and we need to make sure that each and every employee kami ada lebih kurang 10300 we have about 10300 employees need to understand need to know the goal need to know what the changes are yeah and time given to communicate this was very short was 2 months so how do we did macam ada kami buat this roadmap from uh, of course the five year is original form is difficult to understand it's very high level so kita simplify it depending on which group we are communicating with yeah but the objective remains the same cuma menu dia saja kita tukar sedikit yeah 
And because many of our employees, they are more comfortable in Bahasa Malaysia, Bahasa Melayu. So we had the communication in two languages, English as well as BM. And then to make sure that the communication too is consistent, we selected speakers. We train the speakers, we give the speakers the key points for them to communicate. Yeah, supaya tak bercanggah lah. Seterusnya, is to deliver consistent message. That's one of the reasons why we selected the speakers. Yeah? Otherwise, tak faham. This group may not understand, this group may not understand that at the end of the day, the objective of alignment jadi misalignment. And at the same time, as you know, kilang kami kena berjalan. Sales kena jalan. Our, our after sales kena berjalan. So we have to, to minimize the downtime. We have to minimize the operating time. We have to minimize time to take them out from their, their operations. And most of the communication are done after office. For, for the top management, senior management, and a few mid-management, saya sendiri yang communicate. And my, man, my communication will start at 8 p.m. At, and it will end at about 12 midnight or 1 o'clock. Imagine three or four engagements per week that need to be done. There was an occasion in which saya dah nak pengsan, dah nak jatuh. Because I was just too tired. Yeah, but that's the commitment that my team and I, my top management, to make sure that these are communicated and, under, and understood by everybody. Sebab lepas tu ada Q&A session dan sebagainya. Yeah? So despite materials being simplified, briefing employees may still not understand. That's the reason why kita buat Q&A session. This is very important. The Q&A session amat-amat mustahak. Not only that, later I will show to you, kita buat survey pula selepas tu to make sure that everybody understands. Eh? Ah, this is the survey. Ini actual survey result, lah, tuan-tuan dan perempuan. Eh? <laughs> Verified by the auditors. 94% of our employee, they kata roadmap is important for a company. They agree. Number two, they are aware of their role, 92%. 90% understand how the company achieve its long-term target or is going to achieve the long-term target. 89% understand what the roadmap is, the new roadmap, the five-year roadmap, or we call it transformation 2.0. And 88% easy to understand the presentation content based on the other points that I, I shared with you earlier. Yeah? And these were the respondents, yang bawah tu were the respondents punya ratio, yeah? depending on yeah, uh, strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, so on and so forth. So, in a way, we were quite surprised by the results. We were hoping to get good results, but at the same time, we were prepared for the backlash as well. But luckily, the result was, was in a way, quite good. And then, in terms of attendees, point quite, quite high about 80%. And these are the sessions that we had, uh, 77 sessions, head, of, head office, the outlets, you know, the kilang, so on and so forth. And these are some of the other examples in terms of engagement to build good discipline. You know, part of our culture is Japanese. We are half Japanese, half Malaysian. So discipline is very important. This is something that we learn, we take from our partner. Our partner is Daihatsu. Kita ada new, new recruits, especially in the Kilang. They have to undergo staff matching. Because it inculcates discipline. And later you will see, not only discipline, it talks about synchronization. Dalam plan ni, but there are banyak process that need to be synchronized. And then team building activities, which I'm sure you are also doing it. You know, staff marching and cleaning activity by the staff. Okay, this is one of the transformation that we did in our kilang. At their workplace, when you go to our kilang, it is all cleaned by our own staff. 
termasuk toilet. We only hire cleaners to clean the external compound. Initially, they were not happy. Then they took pride. Kita buat competition. Yeah? Of course, the leaders must lead by example. Lah. Saya dan rakan-rakan pengurusan kanan, we also turun bawah, kita clean. Kita tunjuk that we are committed to this. Okay, enjoy the video. This is not in Kodo, this is in Japan, but we are trying to be like that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, any actual video, this happened in one of the organizations in Japan. Those are new employees. They have to undergo marching, in which we have started in our organization. So it talks about discipline, talks about training, and the synchronization. You take out that tadi. Precise, kan? Very precise. And this is what we are trying to achieve in Produa as well. Now, with discipline, we have seen, these are some of the KPIs I'm sharing with you. Uh, kita look at uh, attendance rate, uh, tardiness we call it, absenteeism. So all this we manage, we have programs, we do counter measures. And once we are able to manage this, our quality improves a lot. Uh, which is shown in the, the, the third diagram, sebelah bawah tu. Yeah? Uh, lagi apa ni, if it goes down, maknanya the quality is much better. So, improve discipline, zero tardiness, it improve the defects. We call it defects per unit. Now, what are the other engagements? Of course, we got our, our town hall. You know, I do a, a, a quarterly town hall with, uh, with the leaders of the organization. And then on a monthly basis, we have our own company town hall by the respective uh, heads of operating companies, and then kita ada incentive trip. You know, if they achieve certain thing, we we send them to edu educational trip. The recent one, there was a motor show in Jakarta. We also need to know what's happening in the region, and then we celebrate with staff. Kita ada raya puasa. Kita ada, you know, Malaysians just love durian. Any of you in this room who doesn't like durian? Except for the foreigners lah. Malaysians yang tak suka durian, ada tak? Ada. Ada kan? Ada. Then you're not Malaysian lah. But by and large, Malaysians love durian, betul tak? So kita pun buat keduri durian. And I, I'm sure many other organisations does that as well. You know, we had, uh, terima kasih Puan Azida, kita gunakan UITM. We, we just had our carnival sukan. So this informal and formal thing need to be done. Uh, recently, you know, this this is becoming more and more more popular. The dos ball, we just had our own dos ball tournament, and then we share the company's direction. We have our management dinner. Kami ada award just like you. 
you know, best employee, long, long service awards that we give out. And then new staff at the induction there. Kemudian, what is more important here? In, in, in Japanese, we call it gemba. You go down. The bosses need to go down. Either to the plant, to the showroom, to the workshops, to really understand what is happening. You don't want just to receive reports. Reports sometimes can be, you know, the window dresser. So you really need to go down to understand what's happening, find out the root cause. Eh? Team building program, and then, you know, this is something that we did. Yeah, we, we have every morning what we call five to ten minutes stand-up meeting. What do we do in this stand-up meeting? Kita review yesterday. What, what, what were we supposed to do yesterday? Did we achieve or not? If we did not achieve, kenapa? And then, what is the plan for today? Why ten minutes? To make it quick. Otherwise, once you sit down, jadi panjang. Cerita lain keluar. Cerita politik keluar. Orang Malaysia suka cerita politik. Eh? Dia bola, politik, makan. Itu je. Fashion. <laughs> tudung. Tukar tudung. Eh? <laughs> okay. And of course, we also have other engagement, ladies and gentlemen. Di antara lain, um, saya dan Pengurusan kanan, we meet the, our unions. I mentioned to you, we have four unions on a quarterly basis. Memang, we meet them. This is the formal meeting. And then the informal one, what kita ada, kita ada sharing session, especially with new employees. And now you got this Y generation. Memang susah nak manage. <laughs> so you need to have engagement with them all the time, formal and informal. And then we also have what we call the Teh Tarik session, sebelah petang, a few of us. Sit down with a few of them, just to get feedback from them. Apa ya? Kita free topic. They can talk about anything as long as how to improve the work, how to improve the organisation. Yeah. Kemudian uh, we have, of course, facilities. You know, we have built our own masjid. We have our own child centre. We have locker rooms. We have staff cafeteria. We have hostel. We have our own in-house clinic. Uh, sports and recreational, recreational activities, all these are very important to have employee engagement, to have employee retention so that they are happy. Yeah? Kemudian, kita ada employee satisfaction survey. Uh, we have our own happiness index. This is also done on a quarterly basis and then at the same time, we encourage volunteerism. Yeah? So there are quite a number of our staff who are involved in this. Uh, those who, who, who gets involved in this, they are, they are being evaluated. Masuk dalam their job description. What I've not mentioned to you here, apart from the five to ten minutes morning meeting that I mentioned to you, so below morning meeting too, kita ada exercise, ten minutes. Uh, in Japanese, we call it Taiso. Everybody is involved. Uh, remember, I talked about being healthy, yeah? So, every morning sebelum start kerja, kalau kita start at 8, 7.50, kita akan buat exercise. Tak kira dia kerja apa sekalipun. Group by group lah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming towards some of the final slides. What are the key success factors? Group planning, kena be meticulous, you weigh the risk, you look at options and outcomes. You need to be enthusiastic in implementing and monitoring the plan. Be focused so that you don't have derailment. Don't feel exhausted as employees engagement is a long journey. Especially when you're going through that transformation that I talked about with you. And after laying out a thorough plan, ada target dia, ada KPI dia, ada dia punya schedule. Minta maaf, saya menggunakan uh, apa ni, logo or motto of Nike. Yeah? I hope that uh, are there Nike representatives here? Tak ada kan? I don't have to pay. <laughs> so after you have done all this, you just do it. Jangan bagi excuse lagi dah. You just do it. This is a quote from the CEO of Avis, Mr. Robert Robert Salerno. What did he say? It's impossible to win the hearts and minds of people unless you clearly establish 
goals and value, values and reward the people if they act in a way that leads to the fulfilment of those objectives. It quickly became clear to me that if you want to make sure your customers are treated well, you have to make sure you treat your employees well and recognize their efforts. So if you look back at some of the slides that I shared with you earlier, it has to do a lot with what, has been, what is being said by Mr. Robert Salerno. So quickly through Prodoa, you all dah tahu, saya dah sebut tadi, 12 tahun berturut-turut, ini kami punya equity structure, 38% owned by UMW, Daihatsu ada 20% and then ada some local, some other local uh, shareholders. Uh, this is the, kita ada sales company, we have the manufacturing company under our joint venture agreement. Our manufacturing company is headed by a representative of Daihatsu. So kita ada, yang tu saya sebut tadi, kita ada mixed culture of local and Japanese. Yeah? Uh, this has been our performance. We have been, the last three, four years, we have been selling about 200,000 unit. Thank you to all of you. Uh, this year alone, you know, in May, our market share, in May alone, our market share, Prodoa market share in Malaysia, 51.1%. Especially the new MyV lah, yeah. Uh, ni kita punya after sales service in tandem with sales we are servicing more of our vehicles uh, this is uh, we went into body and pain new business it's doing very well these are some of the key milestones you know we we launch uh, some of the facilities we have our own engine plant uh, some of the models that we we launched recently the latest one i think which you all know is the new myv by the way the new myv is designed locally yeah? Platform engine, we use Japanese technology, but what you see externally and internally is designed locally. The chief designer styling department is a UITM graduate. Something that we should all be proud of. And we have, of course, we have won quite a number of awards and recognition. You know, we are humbled by all this recognition. It just motivates us. Uh, these are some other recognitions, some of it uh, our lady chairperson that I mentioned. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I will end my presentation. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Sorry, I, I took longer than the time allocated.